What will Russia do if they lose the war? That question is important because their offensive in Donbass does not seem to have momentum and other countries have doubled down on the weapons deliveries to Ukraine. So it looks like things are in a process of going from bad to worse for Russia. And the US Secretary of Defense even explicitly said that the goal now is to destroy Russia's long-term military capability so they can't start new wars in the future. That's a pretty dramatic statement. But is it realistic that Putin will acknowledge defeat or is he going to escalate into a much bigger war? Maybe even nuclear war? That's the big question. And if you believe that Putin will escalate, then it's a pretty scary moment right now because then it looks like we're heading straight for World War III. So in this video, I want to look at Russia's options. And to be honest, I think it's a wrong way to look at it to assume that Putin is either going to give up or to escalate the war because it's not really an either or question. And I think he's going to do both. It was a dramatic statement that Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin came with last week. What he said was, we want to see Russia weakened to the degree that it can't do the kinds of things that it has done in invading Ukraine. So it has already lost a lot of military capability and a lot of its troops, quite frankly. And we want to see them not have the capability to very quickly reproduce that capability. I must admit that I was surprised that the Secretary of Defense would say it so directly, but the message itself is not surprising. It's a very clear articulation of the Ukrainian vision of victory that I described in a previous video. Uh, some people see it as a declaration of a proxy war, but I don't think so. I think it shows that the United States is aligned with Ukraine's ambitions for the war that they believe that Ukraine is going to win and that they are willing to provide the assistance to support the war in the long run. And then the message to Russia is that they might as well stop the war now so that they don't lose too much of their military potential. But this level of support for Ukraine has caused some people to question whether the Western approach is responsible. Is it realistic that Putin will acknowledge defeat and and the war, or is it just going to escalate? And to get an idea about that, I think we need to look at what the options actually are for Putin if Russia can't realize their goals on the battlefield. Because many people have very strong opinions about this question without thinking through what the consequences would be for Russia and for Putin himself with the different options. For example, the British Defense Minister Ben Wallace said that he believes that Putin might use the Victory Day celebration on May 9th to initiate mass mobilization. And I think he got this idea from this Rusi report but I think they lack the explanation of the negative consequences for Putin if he were to take this step. So before we get to looking at the different options that Putin has, we need to reflect on his priorities. And the order of priorities matters. So it's not just uh, about what's important, but more about what is more important than something else. And I think it's important to understand that for Putin and for Russia, Ukraine is not the most important thing in the world. It's very important. It is so important that they went to war for it. But there are a few things that are more important than Ukraine. And the first one is Russia itself. We, we have to remember that for Russia, uh, this is still a war that is mostly happening abroad. And they would like to keep it that way. So just like NATO doesn't want the war to spread into Europe, Russia doesn't want it to, to spread into Russia. And this is, of course, an important priority for the Russians who live there, but it's also important for Putin himself. Like, there is no reason to doubt that he is a true patriot. And another thing that is more important to Putin than Ukraine is the stability of his own government. If he has to choose between maintaining control in Russia or continuing the war in Ukraine, then he's going to choose to maintain the power in Russia. And this is not just a question about corruption and stuff like that, but also because Putin has a deep felt belief that his leadership is important. In his world, there is a connection between himself and Russia's greatness because he was the one who lifted the country out of the chaos of the 1990s and 
Without him, the country can fall back into this chaos. So that's why Putin doesn't distinguish very much between what's good for himself and what is best for Russia. And obviously it requires a bunch of things to maintain control over Russia, but in this video I will focus on two things. The first one is control over the security services, and the second one is control over the public narrative. In a normal context, that means control over the press, which provides the information uh, to the public and builds the narrative. But it also means that you limit other channels of information that can challenge the official narrative. And as I will discuss in a moment, some of the options that, that Putin has about Ukraine will challenge his monopoly on the public narrative. So if Putin loses the loyalty of the security services or he loses control over the information space, then he's losing the power to rule Russia. So these are the three priorities that I will consider in this video. And I think the right order of them is that the war in Ukraine is in the bottom. And the most important priority for Putin is to maintain his own power in Russia, because that is the key to everything else. So we have this order of priorities that we can use to evaluate Putin's options if he's about to lose the war in Ukraine. And I think there are three options that are in play. Uh, the first one is that Putin can, of course, acknowledge defeat and stop the war. And of course, he's not the kind of person who is sort of famous for admitting mistakes or taking responsibility for bad outcomes. So he's not going to say it publicly. He would have to invent some kind of explanation that would make it look good. And I will come back to that uh, and to what that explanation might be later in the video. But the important thing is that uh, the effect would be the same, that Russia withdraws from the war without achieving any of their goals. If we measure this outcome against the priorities, then obviously Russia won't achieve their third priority of winning in Ukraine. Uh, but the top two priorities are pretty safe. Uh, there will not be a major war on Russian territory. And with the, with the right public framing of the exit from Ukraine, I think Putin will also maintain a very good control over Russia. The second option that Putin has is mass mobilization in Russia. This is the option that Ben Wallace talked about. So at the moment, Russia is trying to fight the war in Ukraine at their peacetime strength, and they have committed about 100% of the available forces. But if Putin declares that it is a real war and no longer a special military operation, then he has more soldiers than he can use. There are conscript soldiers and he can call in the reserves and he can mobilize the broader population. So this is something that can change the war in Ukraine because we're talking about a very big number of soldiers that Russia can mobilize. And it seems that many people in the West assume that Putin will do this because they think it is impossible that Putin can acknowledge a defeat. But if we look at the other priorities, I think it gets more complicated. It's, it's probably not going to lead to a war on Russian territory, so we can check off priority two. But the first priority is a problem. If Putin chooses to commit conscripts to the war in Ukraine or initiates mass mobilization, then there will be significant negative consequences in the Russian society, and he's essentially jeopardizing his own power base. And that's because uh, Putin would be undermining his own monopoly on the narrative about the war. Russia has about 260,000 conscript soldiers, and that is 260,000 families that would instantly become anxious about the safety of their son or relative who is going through conscription. And there is another 135,000 families or so who are waiting to send their young men to military service in, in the fall draft. So that is millions of potential anti-war ambassadors in the Russian society. And also, we should not overlook the fact that in many ways, such a step would be an indirect way of publicly admitting that the special military operation is a failure. Putin said from the beginning that he would not use conscript soldiers, so he would lose a lot of credibility if he does it anyways. Also, sending the conscripts to Ukraine would make it harder to control the narrative about the war because these soldiers would call home and tell about their experiences. So 
there would be a myriad of new information channels that are impossible to control. And finally, we should consider that in, in the case of mass mobilization, those first in line to go to Ukraine might very well be those who serve in the security services. Uh, these are the same people that Putin ultimately relies on to take care of protesters and secure his regime. So if Putin declares mobilization of the Russian society, then he might lose the loyalty of the security apparatus and he might lose the ability to control the narrative in society. So not only is he in risk of losing the public support for the war, but ultimately he can lose public su support for his own leadership of Russia. And for that reason, general mobilization can compromise the one thing that is priority number one for Putin, which is the stability of his own regime. The last option that I uh, just want to touch on is the use of nuclear weapons to win in Ukraine. I, I don't think it's a likely scenario, so I'm going to do it pretty quickly. If Russia were to use nuclear weapons, I think there is a very high risk that other countries, including the United States, would engage directly in the fighting in Ukraine to make sure that it would be a net loss for Russia. So they can't actually win the war in Ukraine this way. There is also a high risk that it could escalate the war in ways that would spill over into Russian territory. And finally, the use of nuclear weapons will totally destroy Putin's ability to control the narrative about the war. It's really hard to explain that you have a limited special military operation to help Ukrainian people against some bad Nazis. And then suddenly you're bombing these people that you're supposed to be helping with nuclear weapons. This would severely jeopardize Putin's ability to maintain power in Russia. So when I see this figure, I think it's very unlikely that Russia is going to use nuclear weapons because it's not going to do anything good for them. And I also think it's unlikely that there is going to be mass mobilization because it will compromise Putin's number one priority of regime stability. So I think the most likely outcome is that there will be some variation of acceptance of defeat. And that's why I don't think it is irresponsible when the United States or NATO put so much pressure on Putin in Ukraine. This is brinkmanship, but it's not recklessness. They are pressuring Putin into this dilemma where he has to make a choice. Essentially, they're forcing him to choose whether he wants to put his own regime security on the line. And some people believe that if Russia loses in Ukraine, then Putin will also lose power in Russia. But I don't think so. Of course, he can't just come out and accept defeat, but he, he, can, he can spin this in a way where it will work for him. So, so frankly, I also don't think the West has to worry too much about giving Putin an off-ramp in Ukraine because he has so much power over the Russian media that he can just create his own off-ramp if he wants to. And, and this brings me to the question of escalation, because even though I said that mass mobilization and nuclear weapons are unlikely step for, steps for Russia, I still think they are going to escalate this conflict because escalation is really the only meaningful way ahead for Putin. He will try to drive up the tensions and expand the conflict as much as possible. And, and that's what the false flag attacks in Transnistria are, are about and, and all the talk about nuclear war. Um, because this escalation serves two good purposes for Russia. First, it's Russian brinkmanship. They hope that the West will lose determination in the face of possible escalation. And second, it creates the conditions under which Putin can withdraw from Ukraine without actually acknowledging defeat. This will ensure that, that Russia didn't lose a war to Ukraine because that would be embarrassing, but instead it is framed as an ongoing war against NATO. There will probably be some kind of peace deal where Russia doesn't get very much, but just enough that Putin can portray himself as the leader who averted nuclear war. And then the escalation will ensure that the image in Russia is that the fight is not over, but rather that it has only just begun. That Russia is actually up against an entire Western alliance of Russophobic governments who interfered in Ukraine on the side of the Ukrainian Nazis. 
In fact, you know, everyone can be Nazis. So this is not just Ukrainian Nazis, but also American Nazis and British Nazis and Australian Nazis and what have you. And, and Russia can frame itself as the leader of the global fight against Nazism. Like this sounds silly and it's probably a bit exaggerated, but it's a narrative that would fit nicely with the current story in Moscow. And it could mean that a withdrawal from Ukraine would not be seen as a defeat, but rather as the beginning of a much bigger fight in which Russia faces an existential threat from abroad. So my point is that acknowledging defeat in Ukraine does not necessarily have to be bad for Putin's grasp on power in Russia. And in fact, it could create sort of a kind of a rally around the flag effect but it has to happen in the shape of escalation rather than disillusionment. So I think that if things go really bad for Russia and Ukraine, they will at some point acknowledge defeat and withdraw because uh, this will be the only choice that will not jeopardize other priorities that are even more important to Russia and to Putin than winning in Ukraine. But it will take place in the shape of escalation. So I think we should be prepared for that. There will be some very tough rhetoric about nuclear war and stuff like that in the coming weeks and months because that is a part of the process. And with that, I'll end it here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time.